Hi there. I have one leg. <laughs> I use crutches. I had cancer when I was eight. I think that answers most of the questions. <laughs> More importantly, I have two remarkable girls and a husband who thinks I'm Wonder Woman. I rarely ask for help because I think I'm Wonder Woman. When we got pregnant, my sweet, well-intentioned mother-in-law was a little concerned about some of my limitations. One night while on the phone with my husband, she asked very delicately just how I planned on carrying our baby once it was here. My husband, without missing a beat, said, in her mouth, like a cat. <laughs> After that, my mother-in-law never really questioned us again. <laughs> my OBGYN insisted I get a wheelchair. My wheelchair is still in the saran wrap from where we moved in 2010. I can do most everything on my crutches. I don't need a lot of help. And truthfully, if you offer it, I'm going to say no just to prove that I can do it. To carry my kids, I used an ergo carrier. I became a pro at the ergo. I could put my kids on my front, my back, and there was even one misguided attempt at the hip carry. <laughs> you really have to have two legs for that one to work. <laughs> like all first time parents, I knew everything. And I may have been a little cocky about my parenting abilities. I mean, my perfect little newborn Kennedy was the most amazing baby to ever grace the earth. She slept through the night at 11 weeks, pulling 11 hours at a time, and rarely had a blip of sleep regression. She put herself on her own perfect nap schedule a two-hour nap in the morning and one in the afternoon without fail. While my other friends in playgroup complained and groaned about lack of sleep and colicky babies, I empathized but secretly thought they just needed to try a little harder. <laughs> Kennedy really was a perfect baby and grew into the model toddler. The terrible twos were nothing for us. She was so easy. Sure, she had the occasional meltdown, but it was nothing a little conversation and some cuddles couldn't fix. And then three happened. <laughs> and it happened all one afternoon at Gymboree in the mall. We went to the mall, and I decided that she was being such a great kid lately that I didn't need to bring my ergo. I didn't need it because she was perfect and easy, which was a direct result of my perfect parenting. <laughs> and I was writing all of this down for the parenting book deal I was surely going to have. <laughs> I shopped, and Kennedy watched the TV that Jim Barry had so kindly offered. We were the perfect example of a mom and her preschooler. Once I was done getting some new staples for Kennedy's spring wardrobe, I went to pay. Shit, I'd left my credit card at home. I was irritated and embarrassed. The saleswoman assured me it happened all the time. She would gladly just hold on to these sweet little dresses until we could come back. I crutched over to Kennedy and I explained that we were, we were going to have to go. And in that moment, my perfect little daughter turned into a demon from hell. <laughs> she fell to the floor, her legs kicking and her screams of outrage filled the store. She, in no uncertain terms, told me she was not leaving. Okay, I got down on her level. I explained that mommy left her credit card at home and needed to go get it. 
the rage monster started to turn purple, her eyes becoming nothing but huge dilated pupils. She screamed some more. I'm pretty sure she was calling me every name in the book. Now I was screwed because I decided to leave that stupid ergo in the car. It wasn't like I could scoop her up and carry her out in all of her tantruming glory. I'd seen many parents do it in the past. I knew what it looked like. There was just no way in hell that I could do it. I squatted down once again, trying my love and logic. I explained our situation. <laughs> she didn't hear my love or logic. She was too busy screaming at the top of her lungs. By this point, the sales lady had started to panic a little bit. The one-legged mom could clearly not control her monster of a child. <laughs> Said child was scaring away potential customers and probably causing a rush of birth control. <laughs> and no one was offering me their help right now. I was panicking. I couldn't get her out of the damn store. There was just no way that I could pick up this writhing savage and carry her out. I mean, it just wasn't possible. Unless I sat down. So I sat down. I sat down, I put my crutches in one hand and hauled the thrashing she-demon against me <laughs> and scooted out of the stupid store <laughs> on my ass. <laughs> I started to scoot down the center of the mall towards the department store we'd come in through when Kennedy finally got her shit together. <laughs> she sniffed and asked for a damn cupcake. <laughs> I decided at that moment she would be lucky to ever leave the house again. Motherhood is not for the cocky because it will humble you in the most unexpected and humiliating ways. <laughs> Kennedy is now seven and a still pretty model kid. And her little sister Eleanor blew all of my preconceived notions on parenting, you know, sleep schedules and love and logic, right out of the damn water. But I never forgot my damn ergo again. 